So this is the issue I'm running into. Universal G Code Sender says that it has sent the commands to the CNC machine, but uh, it doesn't have a done check mark or a response OK. Um, what that's telling me is that the stepper motors are being sent the command of what to do through Universal G Code Sender, but the encoders inside the stepper motors aren't saying that their position, their required position, has been met. Um, based on what I've been reading online, the biggest cause of this is usually electromagnetic interference. So today I'm going to try to take out any possible causes of electromagnetic interference with the CNC machine. Since this problem with my CNC just recently occurred, I'm guessing it's because the brushes on my spindle are worn out. So the fix could just be as easy as changing the brushes, but that seems like a band-aid fix to me. I think the, the correct way to fix this is not only to change the brushes, but to ground the CNC frame and install shielded cables as well. And I figure this way, even if in the future the brushes of my spindle do become worn, it won't cause the same issue that I'm having now. So these are the three tasks we're going to try to accomplish and see if that fixes my issue. So I've taken apart the router and the router I use is a DeWalt DWP611 and it is a brushed router so that means it has brushes which I've talked about needing to change. Um, and I've already changed them out but I'll kind of show you how you do it. So there's this spring in here that you actually pull up and you have to use a screwdriver or something and then you put it over this hook right like that. And once it's over the hook, this is the brush itself, and you just pop this off, and the brush pulls out, and then you replace it, and then once it's replaced, you put the spring back down, and it's done. And there's two of them, one on either side. And to show you how worn these are, I, um, I actually bought a set of two new brushes whenever I bought them. Um, so this is the original brush, right? So as you can see, it's shorter because it wears off. And here is what a new brush looks like. As you can see, this brush is probably, I don't know, a third of the way worn down. Um, and I'm not an expert on brushes. I don't know if that's a lot or a little. Uh, but uh, figured can't hurt to change them. So we're going to change them up. All right, let's look at base conditions right now. So my thought is, None of this aluminum extrusion on the CNC machine is connected to the ground terminal inside my control panel. I'm pretty much positive it's not, but we should test anyways. So this, as most of you know, is a multimeter, and it has a function, uh, I think it's called a continuity function or maybe a chime function, I don't know what they call it, but basically what happens is if these two probes uh, register zero resistance between them whenever you put them on something, then it'll make a sound. It'll sound like this. And that's telling you that there's zero resistance between the two pieces that you're touching. Um, I'm going to put one of these on my ground terminal inside my control panel, and the other one I'm going to go around and start testing random points on the aluminum extrusion and seeing if it actually chimes. I really don't think it will, but let's give it a shot. Ground terminal's hooked up, so let's start testing. No chime there. No chime there. No chime there. No chime there. Nothing. So, nothing's currently grounded. Let's go try fixing that. So let me show you what I've done. On three places of the CNC, I've routed conductors and bolted them to the aluminum extrusion. These conductors are then routed back to my control panel, and they are all terminated on a single point, and that point is then bonded to the house ground. So everything should be grounded. So I've got one connection for the bottom of the CNC, I've got another connection for the gantry, and another connection for the z-axis. And the reason I did that is because every place I have a, a gantry or a movable part, it's all routed on these V-wheels. 
And these V wheels are just really hard plastic, so there's no electrical continuity between the two. So to make sure everything's bonded, I just had to route three conductors. Okay, I've installed all of my ground connections as I showed you. Um, let's try doing that continuity test again. So I've got my multimeter. I'm going to take the probe. I've already attached the other side to the ground bus and my control panel. Let's go tap around and see if we hear any noises. Yep, there we go. So it seems to be working. So we know that the whole frame now is on the same potential. Let's see if the gantry is. Gantry is at the same potential. Both sides of the gantry. Uh, let's test the Z axis. That's perfect. The springs are even grounded. And let's see if this is all robust enough to even just ground the frame of the router. I don't know if it will be. Hot dang. So that's good. So that means that everything all the metal on this machine is now connected to a single point and that point is connected to ground and hopefully that helps reduce all the EMF problems we're having. So I installed new cables to all of the stepper motors and I didn't want to show that because that'd be a little bit boring but I figure I can kind of show you the difference between the two cables. So these were the original cables I was using and these are I think they call them LED cables I don't know it's it's uh, stranded conductors, um, as you can see here, it's just four conductors, nothing else. Um, and this is what I was using before, it's just a sample. This is what I replaced it with, and as what you can see here, hopefully, is that there are still four conductors, but you also have this, it kind of looks like aluminum foil wrapped around it, and that is your shield. And there's also this cable right here. So what you do is you take this cable and you tie it to the same ground connection point in your control panel and what that does is then all this aluminum foil type shielding um, protects your wires from electromagnetic interference so I installed that for all of my stepper motors on the CNC machine. So I showed you guys the shielded cable that I was going to run to all the stepper motors but I still have another cable and that is the power cable to my router. So experts say to not run the power cable for your router in the same drag chain that you route the signal wires for your stepper motors. Um, but I really like that it's a really clean looking installation and I don't have to mess with any more wires. I've seen people route their power cables up on strings and above their CNC and it's better I'm sure but I just don't like the way it looks and it seems like it would be a little bit more cumbersome than I'd like. So to try to fix the EMF coming off of the power cable for the router, I've installed this braided aluminum shielding cable. And this is just a sleeve that went on top of the SO cable that I had routed to my router. And I've taken this cable and I've actually bonded it to the ground terminal in the control panel. So everything should still be at the same potential and it should capture any EMF that uh, that would typically escape this so hopefully that fixes the issue. Now that I installed new brushes on the spindle I grounded the CNC frame and I installed shielded cables on the stepper motors as well as a shield over the spindle power cable it was time to try the CNC out. So the piece you're seeing me cut out was a piece I had problems with before so the CNC crashed at least 10 times the first time I tried to cut this before I did any of the fixes. As you can see here, the CNC plows through this cut, no big deal. So long story short, I think the problem's fixed. Hopefully this video helps you troubleshoot any issues you may be having with your CNC. Or better yet, hopefully it teaches you how to make your CNC the right way the first time so you don't run into the same issues I'm having. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.